since we are talking about the OIC, let me start with the last question. Uh, yes, indeed, we 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 experienced uh, some delays in the execution of the 50 kilometers of OIC roads, but for specific reasons. Um, you know, um, until now, um, hardly um, proper planning has been done in any of our you know built up cities. Um, the problem is that uh, you go to some of these areas where we are building you know the OIC roads probably with the exception of some areas in Kanifing. If you go to Sukuta, if you go to Burfut, if you go to uh, Talinding, the Latrikundas, the Joko Johnson, you will see that the compounds are very close to each other, not more than six meters. And for the OIC road corridors that we are building, we need uh, seven meters for the road proper, 1.5 meters uh, for the soldiers on either end. So that means that uh, you need to have between 10 and 11 meters. Now, if you have a situation where the roads are less than seven meters, you have to do a lot of dem de de demolition. I can tell you in some streets alone, you know, the demolition cost is way beyond $35 million. So this is a very, very expensive project. And to demolish, you have to follow the law. You have to first uh, come and do a survey, identify the places to be demolished, then do the markings on the compounds. You go and engage the landowners you know, do a community sensitization and then do the costing. And that costing also, in some cases, when you give it to the yard owners and then they disagree, you have to, you know, allow them to do their own valuation. Some of them will even take you to court. And then you have to, you know, the injunction will be placed on you for you to wait for the final determination of those court cases. Then beyond that also, you have what we call relocation of services. You have water, electricity, and, you know, Gamtel telecoms pipes. And, and, and cables all on this road corridor. And you cannot build a road on this. And what used to happen in this country was that um, people will have services on one side of the road. So if you are on the right hand side of the road, you have water, electricity, and the other pipes there, then the others on the left hand side will have to cut the road so that they can get the services. So this time what we are doing is that we are providing these services on either side of the road. And that is why we are building brand new infrastructure for Nawek and also for Gamtel. So that actually is part of the, the, the delays. And any I mean, a deviation from the original plan also will have to go to a tedious planning and renegotiation with the consultants, the donor, and also the, the client, which is the government. So really, building in um, a built-up community is extremely very, 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 very difficult. Um, we, we have agreed with uh, the funder, which is uh, the Saudi fund, to extend the project. Because you know, this is not the first time that they have done this type of projects. Um, they have done it in Senegal, in Bangladesh, and many other places. And they know that in urban communities, it is always a problem especially for most developing countries, there is hardly very good urban planning. So they have understood. We finalized uh, some two months ago. I led the discussion with my technical team and the NRA, and of course the OIC Secretariat and the Ministry of Finance. We agreed among ourselves that we give another extension to the project so that uh, you know most of the roads will be finished uh, this year. But in case that is not happened, because of the rain season also is fast approaching, we are giving up to May of next year. We are likely going to finish everything, but it's just to ensure that uh, all roads are completed within the new schedule of time. Thank you. Yes, the Hakalang, the famous Hakalang, we are now able to Kalang Hakalang, that I can tell you. Um, because uh, from Bunyadu, which is section one, all the way to, um, uh, all the way to uh, Kuntaya, um, we have done all the artwork and then the last course is done and they have done asphalting from Bunyadu to kilometer 33. All right. So we are hopeful that uh, by end of June, that particular section will be fully asphalted. But uh, it also has to depend on the cast flow. You know, it's very expensive to do asphalt. Eh? I mean, uh, then you have the other sections, section two and section three, which is from uh, Buffalo to Bangali. I mean, uh, and also from... Um, Albreda to the other end, uh, going to uh, Kerawan, uh, Kerawan, uh, no, Kerawan Road, you know, the main road coming from <clears throat> um, Bara to Kerawan. So, from, from those who are from that part of the country, will tell you from, from uh, Albreda all the way, that is about uh, 15 kilometers. 
that will be completed maybe October, November. So, I mean, uh, we are very hopeful that and we are on target for the extension that was given to the contractor. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always be careful, uh, to be careful when it comes to projects, you know, the dates. And I remember some major projects, you know, they've always been shifting. I remember when we were building the major airport in Germany. Yes, it took yes. five years. It's all their modern technology yes. because it's so complex and so sophisticated yes. that, you know, it is always advisable, especially for politicians, to be careful when giving dates. If not, you know, <laughs> they, they'll come for you. I'll also recommend that, you know, the media, the director of uh, branding is here to go on a tour to look at that, the beautiful phalanx of vehicles there to see what's happening. At least that will provide impressive features of what's going on yes. so maybe you can arrange your tour to see all the inf uh, structures that are in place and they will look very beautiful on the highway and then they'll stay here and also add value to our public they will have a lot of co uh, good quality vehicles serving the population after the summit that's very good lady you've been on the waiting list for long you, have, you need to come up yeah no you need to the source you know grts you know the modern <laughs> the modern source they need your they need yeah they need your beautiful that's going to be the last question for the day. Oh, you want? No, I'm the chairman, you know, so. Yeah, you appeal. Should I grant his appeal? OK, good. I am John Casey, sir, from The Point newspaper. And my question, one of which is answered. But I also want to know what is the level of compensation for those affected by the construction of these OIC roads? <clears throat> uh, thank you so much. Uh, compensation is ongoing. Um, just to tell you that um, in Bijilo area alone, when um, we did the uh, property valuations, um, one section of the road alone, I think we were to pay 34 million. And um, in December of last year, we provided about um, uh, 17 million <clears throat> dollars to the NRA, and only 2 million was paid out of this. You know why? Because the problem is most of the compounds within the greater Banjul area, the actual owners have either died or, you know, the people who are actually claiming ownership of it, they don't have the titles. The titles are not in their names. And for us, we cannot pay compensation to anyone whose name is not on the title. Or if we are to pay you and your name is not on the title, the entire family have to give you the power of attorney. And it is power of attorney that will now be assessed and then you know you sometimes even you go through the ministry of justice and then there's a curator's office it's a whole complex process yeah the, some of the people who were coming to claim ownership of these places for compensation when we cross check you know there's a whole section at my ministry responsible for that it is not them whose names are on the lease documents so you will send them to bring those necessary documents and remember monies are not paid from us you know, payment vouchers are raised and then they are sent to the treasury and the treasury will send it to the central bank. So the central bank will pay it directly into the beneficiary's bank account. The reason why we doing this was because when this government came in newly, some of the compensations that were paid, especially the, for the demolitions that took place in Brikama, going to uh, um, Jamisa and other places, it actually the previous government refused to pay compensation. So some of the people who rose to claim that they owned the compounds and compensation was paid to them, it was later found out that, in fact, they were not the rightful people whose names were on the either the lease or the Alcalos, uh, you know, designated papers. So that is why now we are saying whoever is claiming ownership of a property demolished. And during our sensitizations, we always do this. Now, some will give their names because when demolition teams go, what happens is when they find people there, they'll say, OK, this is our compound. So who, who's supposed to be the claimant? They put your name there. But when, when it comes to the actual payments, we are still having about $13 million lying there, you know, going through very tedious process because this thing will go through a proper audit system. So we have to make sure that we follow the rules and regulations. And let me take this opportunity also to appeal to the people that uh, within the family setup, let them also amicably resolve issues there. Because sometimes, you see, families are from different, you know, I mean, uh, mothers. Uh, the father may be the uh, title owner of the compound, but when people are from different mothers, sometimes the, the difficulty is who should take the lead for, for his or her name to be on the on the on the claimed, you know, I mean uh, papers, you know, for the claimants to be you know, for the claims to be paid to them. So and you'll see that you can see two or three people can come. We have had these problems in Joshua. 
two or three people can come and claim to be the owners of the, 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 the property. So really, I mean, the delay, yes, we have delays in terms of allocation to us because we have to depend on the Ministry of Finance to get the allocation to us to be able to pay the, 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 the property owners. But significant delays also are coming from the people themselves, the affected property owners themselves, because you know you have to have the right person whose name is on the property or a power of attorney given to you by the entire family, signed by them, certified by you know either the uh, JP or somebody recognized under the law to be able to help us or enable us process the payments. Thank you. Honorable Minister Dongo, um, this passion, portion is so important that I would like you to explain it in local language. Going forward, we'll, uh, we'll be entertaining questions in local language. English is our official language, but that is not a measure of intelligence. We have to make sure the government message is, is, is trickled down to the, so the last man. And this portion I find is so important, so crucial, mm. that you know, I would like you to uh, elaborate in, in any of the local languages that uh, uh, the critical mass can understand. Okay, and coming for uh, Angale Kawala, uh get a compensation or the mole mini along Cosilla Doku el Cordalma and the Masakundanian Takejo. Process on Yinka Kenya Mualam Yenti Janning Cordal from the boiler. Silla Doku la canale Sumandroke. As Casiloning, a meter warola, Walla Yanta Kela Siloti. But more than the Tamala Silo la Damilke have me shoulders. Meter killing an intalante Bulubala, meter thing an incalante talante marala. So Minka Ke Iba de la Cosilo and Sulata Mina. Olam eleven meters because near ten meters ta olam silote ani soldiers one meter fanaka soto mi alonko eka wata puru gamtel la pipe pole eh, nawek la pipe pole ila jio ninkurao ani polo fana nyanta lola dami ni o ok ba mako kela je itela korda de nyim meter nangam karin sulata wala je ibe mako kela bala ibe la tele be dunna korda kona ibe la telephone number tala ni la telephone number ta is na saying e lungo londi ini mulbe na kasha unka alkalol bula woltolol unka sefol bula je nka national assembly member bulaje nka lawyer fana bulaje mi alonko woli lua lonne nka engineer fana bulaje anin na ministry la do kulal so ni data se mol sensitize ka ah kabri nata la ministry of local government mi ni alonko wala ka property valuation ni ko tolbi ko ok so ni wala property sa fo ko ila ni corda nanga mo ni nga ni mi tar nanga mo min ta a kanyanta ni na fem be jola min nata ni man d'accord dol ka tale fansu loyalta ni o loyalta ye nana ya fo ko ton manso de na senake di amoti kachati mi ya lon ko pulun se ben nim man ben kanto isaje cordati ni start kiti la asa fo nyoko aldo ko lon do la ma fawlan bika fenke je bamba tel fo kiti ni ya bam folo ni na ni kambenta joro na nyinge bar problem mi ya lon ko ka soto joro la karola wala mi nyinti mo jamal bi je mi ya lon ko surtu na jamma fo la parce que nga lon ne corda jamal bi je sera sanje tal lulti dol sanje taw woro fa ay si ameda mi ni o corda lo mil tal mil tol be kayto bala jama jama wol dol fatal wala iman tara banko ka so min ka ke problem oti dingol min ka tara je wala ma marin wol min ka tara je itol cordala list kay to bala min to ka tara je ani min kana ka foko itol le tam cordati pour kana ka compensation fon nyin ka request e bi ka ke klimti yo antol dum ni nata nan ni to min to kay to min be corda bala ani to min na min nata nan pour kana claim ke ni wol man klim do ka foko ko dejo la no Albital Benin Nekalan, Semin for Wolom Ninti, Bao Nin Cordati Mantra Balurin, but Albesta Ali Kambe, a power of Atoni di Mokilina, Wolom Casembo di Mokilina Purkanaka in Kodo Kanin. New Wokata, Womari Binala, Abitala Mo Be, Miltamo, Mil Mil Milka for Toletamo Cordati, Beba Sainale, ID card number print ye, Etaya Samba JPA, Wolom Justice of Peace, Yasamboya, Walamomi Alon Colum Mansakundala, Lua Tilti. Ni wole ya sign ya certify ina ya sambana tulika tulisi na jorok. Ba ni wakai tulu mansoro akake problem odi. Be chambo minto Gambia mansa kunda be for example ni tata jibe bijilo na million tani warula hai makabili serun disamba karo puruka jorok. Ba wako do njiko no million fula damale jota no. Pasko mol mini alonko ebe na tena kavu ko italum korda ti tulu tulu mantra korda kai tulu nilibala. So wako kwenye tulu fanara problem odi delay njing. Tonya, Dolphin Aka Colea Dosoto, Pasca and Tola Ministry, Aman Keko Kodo Kabojan, the Kodo Kabo Finance lay adding to the Ministry of Finance. Ne Adina, then Sina Namul Tandila Kodo Sotale, Alasa for the Purale Joroni. The problem is Ning Wokodo Nifana Natan and Tol Kodo Bicataran Tol Bulajan, a Katara Treasury. It a lot payment claiming, babe come bent a minna, be a misatisfying, be all a dealer, Ilakaito Niasamba Nasamba Treasury, Treasury. 
kama di central bank la central bank ya jola bank account or mbika mojo cash wo bika ka bako na ko do jo rosima di la han ika bank account or soto ye ko do je je pour sama ning kis kis do be kala ning ko do dunta nyami isaja be ses senaya so mbe mol fana dan la wala min ya lon ko corda bal ila corda tiel mantara balori pour y fana salo wo nyama dile do bi je wo ka ke mol tati bar le do bi yo ka ke tol fana da bara dile bo ma ba fo wolum nyimti ka kambe pour ke joro ke joro fana nyante kala nyadile jamala nyante jola kaytol be nyadile ning wo be bondi nyoto do betem bo min to dol fama bi je e tol ye tol min din to la min be safari tol to ila id ka tol to ni tol min be han na tare ko ni ko yanku badiba waye en ke uba dol sa waye en ke o uba so ba je la ni kilim manke ta drong mbi ka joro ko fongata nga authorization o soto ab is a very complex process because mo do sa fono len tamu yanku balati bar min be safari kay to bala waye en ke uba lam bari tala id card ko to bala min bi je maybe letter kilim da sata je wala kilim la faada je wo fona mbi ka wojo fonga proper authorization o soto anda ka ke tedious process ni net so be mol be hako dan la sultu property tel min ya lon ko hansa ila ko do nyanta jola bar ko ila ko do manjo ban sa foy ko man sa kunda step tale ko do surtu bijiloma fama la bina mu nang joswa ma fama kan min finance be kacha kan pour sa je no nyami min nyanta jola se be jo bari se kata yela kay tol nyi ya 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 put intact ala bar barka ba ni toku akuma ta jama buka visa so because it talks about kai ti adikata yankuba passport to yanks you know we look at za for go za for todo or final question in english or in which language in english all right okay okay he's also appealing that he want to ask one thank you very much um i am modu elbaji from star tv and my question goes to the minister of works and um, we understand that a lot of money is being invested to boost the capacity of nawek but still the our um, our electricity uh, electricity condition uh, situation is still erratic so i don't know how are you going to assure uh, the delegates in fact huh? <laughs> yes this just is it's just a sign of indicating how erratic our electricity system is so i don't know you know uh, what is the level of preparation at nawek level in making sure that they you know they they they, they come to you know um, a level that we will we not see them going on and off during this um, uh, days of the summit first let me clarify that i'm not minister of energy i i have very basic information about uh, now but what i know is for example at the banjul international airport we have boosted uh, additional plants for uh, electricity for example at the vvip where most of the uh, international guests will will pass through for the oic summit i can assure you that we have additional uh, generator with uh, the capacity to go 24 hours even without relying on now at the international and and also we have a new transformer basically dedicated to the international uh, to the vvip at the airport now uh, the airport itself has two other additional generators for the for the terminal and also for 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 the apron now uh, when you come to uh, the oic the secretariat also has two brand new generators that will interface with nawek but for purpose of uh, ensuring that uh, we don't have any uh, kind of a pricking or any issue they are going to be on generator while the conference is on now all the other places where our presidents will be staying our vips will be staying they also have additional standby generators so we don't have any problem when it comes to that but you know i mean issues are issues i mean nobody can assure 100 percent when it comes to machines i mean that i feel we all have to understand but government has taken all the necessary steps to ensure that we mitigate some of those issues. Last let me, let me just add on to that. I think going forward, I think the question also about with all this money invested, yes. how will we change the electricity situation? I remember since independence, we have not done any meaningful investment in the energy sector and zero investment in the water sector. Zero in terms of infrastructure. Now, most of the grid is old and outdated. The water infrastructure is old and outdated. Now, through the government of His Excellency President Amabaro now, we are going to modernize the grid. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being invested right now through the OIC project, but also through the project to modernize the entire grid. And it, most of the transformers are so old that when it's too hot, they go up. These are all old transformers. 
So, and development planning takes its long term. If you want to control your energy sector in 10 years, you start that work now. Because these are long term projects. So, now government is investing in the grid. Currently, as we speak, energy generation will not be a problem by 2024. Through solar projects, we are approaching 200 megawatts of electricity, more than what Gambia needs. Through Jambanjeli, Soma, all these solar, green solar projects. And we modernize the grid. Currently, the grid, when you send energy to the grid, before it reaches your house, we lost 25%. It's called system loss. At big cost to government. Currently, we are using heavy fuel to light our generators. These are all old generators. By 2024, as part of universal access, this will change. We'll use green energy. We'll modernize the grid. And we'll avoid universal electricity for every Gambian. And that this work is going on. And these are long-term projects, just for your information. Yeah, and we also have the OMV, OMVG project, which is ready as, as backup, you know. So I'm sure once the distribution system is, uh, is up, to, up to task, it will be connected and it will have 24-7 on interrupt. The final question for the day. Um, thank you very much. My name is Yahya Jao from the West Coast Radio. Um, seeing is believing. Um, this morning, as I bought a vehicle driving from, um, from the uh, um, turn table to this particular place to attend this press conference, I realized that a lot of work um, with regards to the um, uh, the road between Airport Johnson to um, at least the conference center is not completed. The lanes are not drawn. You know, I pass the um, servicemen. Thanks to them, we thank them for their services, doing the cleaning and all of that. Are we expecting in five days' times or six days' times um, the OIC conference will be held here in the Gambia? Are we expecting the completion of at least from the airport Johnson to the OIC conference center to be completed in terms of painting of the pavements and draw the, drawing of the lanes and all of that. That is what I want to ask. Uh, thank you so much. Um, as you can see from the airport, they have almost passed uh, the, uh, what we call um, the Costa Road um, over, overhead bridge for the, for the, for the, for the you know, lanes. You know, they, they are already on that and you know that does not take uh, time i mean uh, uh, we are very hopeful that uh, the lanes will be ready i mean the markings we will go route markings will be ready um, in time for the oic conference now you're talking about the cleanliness of the roads i think you know you the media should also help here i mean um, these roads have been actually cleaned more than three times since uh, the first asphalt layer and the second one being laid. You know the biggest problem? You have trucks that are carrying sand from Banjul to the Combos because the greater majority of the people of this country, you know, do live in the Combos uh, or what we call the greater Banjul area. So you have more than a hundred trucks carrying sand on a daily basis. And most of them, their, their trucks are not covered. So as, as they drive on fever pitch on these roads, you know, a lot of sand drips, all right? And as a result, you'll see sand build up on the very edges of the roads. Right now we are cleaning again, and that is why we appeal to the transport, uh, you know, union and other critical stakeholders within the transport uh, ecosystem to at least give us space for this uh, next four, four days, five days, up to the end of the conference to, enable the trucks to use alternative routes to avoid the roads being you know dirty with sand again that is the only solution now as part of our ongoing efforts to you know work on all these problems we have already bought you know i mean uh, two you know i mean uh, cleaning machines you know clearing machines that will you know regularly be using you know the battle hardening from end to end you know now and even after the conference you know it will be given to a facilities management company to actually on a daily basis, on a regular basis, clean the road. Two, I mean, I will deploy the other one from Banjul all the way to Westfield and Westfield going through Latrekunda to the Talindins and to, you know, all, uh, to the Yumdum um, airport uh, intersection that you have the dual carriage so that, you know, we can reduce. And evidentially, this should have been the work of uh, the municipalities all over the world. It is the municipalities that clean the roads. But you should also ask, what are your municipalities doing? Why are they not doing the simple thing of cleaning the roads? Why are they not doing that? I think you should also ask that question. I can assure you that as a ministry, we have equipped our NRA now 
to be complementing the municipalities. But for God's sake, the municipalities should also use the little money that they are collecting from the people, from taxpayers, to also clean the roads. Uh, just an addendum, Honorable Minister. Um, there has been widespread speculation, and as media, we don't believe in speculation. So um, we want clarity. Uh, many people believe um, that the OIC road project will come to a stop the moment the OIC conference, you know, is over. Um, no, no. Is there any assurance? No, I can assure you that uh, the, this project, this project is going all the way to August. That's our contract period with the contractor. So of course, when the, the because this phase two is almost completed and we are going into phase three, um, what I can assure you is that uh, this will continue until the logical conclusion. However, roadworks is actually an ongoing thing because uh, when you build the roads, you have to also build in maintenance cost and also you know maintenance uh, you know mechanisms. So even after the OIC, the building will continue to its logical conclusion and also that uh, we will continue to clean the road, to maintain the road, to ensure that, uh, you know, the quality and the standard is maintained on that stretch. Thank you. Thank you. I can confirm that the workers, they work 24 hours. The other day I was traveling at night uh, from the airport. I see that they are working. So with the energy that they are working, I'm sure that they'll be able to finish the critical part. A final, final, final announcement from the Honorable Minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of Works, uh, OIC Secretary at CEO, and Fali Head of Branding and DPS, and everyone who is here at DPS. Thank you very much, our able uh, chair of this meeting. I just have a few announcements to make. But before I make that announcement, I just want to compliment what Honorable Minister was saying about the third phase of the OIC roads um, that is yet to happen, and that one will include building overhead bridges for public safety. As you can see, the way the highways are now, it's difficult for people to cross from one side to the other, isn't it? The third phase will have overhead bridges, over 17 overhead bridges for people to cross for public safety. But also, there'll be service roads on the side, which will be uh, slapped to the almost people's houses or inside the streets, yes. so that the whole place is clear. the third phase of the road, uh, just for your information. The second thing is going forward, we would also like to ensure that this press conference has elements of the local languages. We'd also urge you that please ask some of your questions in the local languages. We'll try as best as possible to also um, answer those questions in the local language for the benefit of those who cannot understand English. The third thing is the sign language. Almost 15% of Gambians live in one form of, of disability. We are a lot of people who are um, uh, have um, yeah. hearing impairment or visual impairment it's not fair for us to have this information and they don't have access to it now as part of our mandate as minister of, minister of information is for every government to have access to information no matter disability so going forward we'll try to we'll talk with i'll uh, engage the dps to ensure that there is a sign language uh, passing here to ensure that those who can hear or see are also getting access to this information now every two weeks we'll call you We'll ensure that there is someone from one technical ministry. Today we have work, C CEO uh, Secretariat is here because of the recent, you've seen the president was out on Saturday looking at inspecting all the road works just to give you updates as to the status of that, but also the state of preparedness for the OIC conference. So next, in two weeks time, we'll get another technical ministry, minister to come. When we write you to invite, we'll inform you which minister is coming so you can also prepare questions. Thank you.